Jake Paul, big favorite, minus 384. Uh, Nate Diaz, plus 247. Over, under, seven and a half rounds, basically even money. Over is at minus 125. The under is at minus 112. Pretty close to even, like I said, seven and a half rounds. Let's get into it. What are you looking for how here? Many rounds, mean, based on how the many training, rounds is the fight going? Uh, because I don't have internet and we're doing this via my telephone, yeah, Wi-Fi for our connection, I believe it's a 10-round fight. All right, 10. I believe. All right, so 10 rounds. So seven and a half, you said, is the under over? Yep. Okay. And what weight are they contracted at? Because, uh, again, I, I like Paul. I like what he's done, everything, and I love Diaz. But, again, Paul's going to have a weight advantage. Um, I'm just uh, uh, just wondering what, for the fans out there, because if I'm going to break it down, I want to break it down the right way. Um, what weight is this fight contracted at? Because Paul always puts a weight stipulation. Obviously, he's the, you know. Of course. He, he He's the guy that's been setting these fights up and, you know, drawing the attention where he comes from YouTube and he's and now he's fighting all these different guys and he's done a great job. He, he's respected the sport. He's learned what he needed to learn. He's, he's progressively gotten better. Um, he finally satisfied the people that said, well, you fight a boxer, you know, instead of just a MMA guy or an older MMA guy. Well, he did, you know, he fought Fury. It was a close fight. He came up short, but a, a close competitive fight. Uh, Fury's, uh, you know... Uh, 185. All right, so I would say, am I correct, that Jake Paul's going to be the bigger guy, right? The Diaz, when Diaz fought in the UFC, he was fighting at a lower weight class than that, right? Obviously. I mean, I think he, he might have... I don't think he started at 45, but he was definitely at 55. Well, then I mean. he was at 170. Yeah. 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 He, and then he was at 170 most so recently. The, the fight thing. is also 10, ten, ten, rounds. ten rounds, 185 pounds. All right, so good. We got it done the right way for the fans out there. We're going to break it down. Let's break it down properly. So Jake's got... First of all, I think he's gotten better. I think he's continuing to progress. Diaz is going to be what he's going to be. You know, just a tough son of a gun, MMA, UFC fighter, just as tough as they come. Great, great, great following because of his toughness, because of his attitude. He gives Noah's, as my um, son's friends jokingly will say, he no F's given, okay? Does that get to the point? <laughs> no F's given. Jake Paul, look, you're never going to match Diaz, the iconic you know, legend that he is from MMA uh, and the fights and awards that he's been in, uh, you know, he is what he is. But Jake Paul is still a work in progress. A couple years, a few years now in boxing, did it the right way, got a trainer, dedicated himself, learning the right way. Yes, he picked his spots, but he picked them, other than the first one against the basketball player, he he is Nate Robinson, who was you know smaller guy when he played. <laughs> he and not a fighter. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> yeah, he's fought some older guys, no doubt about it. Uh, Silver, the great great Silver, um, uh, that he fought, and that was a competitive fight. Uh, was old. Uh, he's you know Woodley was older in his forties. He, he's he's picked his spots, but he's picked them against real fighters other than the first fight that he had against real MMA fighters for the most part um, that were tough guys that were, you know, there were guys that had a background in fighting. Yes, it was in boxing uh, where he had the edge, even though he's, you know, newer at it. He, it was in his element if you will but still you got to remember even though it's in Paul's element Paul's new at this element <laughs> these other guys <laughs> even though their element is MMA that he fought for the most part you know they still been fighting their whole lives or most of their lives there's still that mentality of fighters that Paul's only had a couple years to get into that gear, to get into that domain. 
to get into that science. They've been straight. Yeah, again, I know a lot of them, the grappling, the jujitsu is, is, is a big part, maybe was the biggest part of their strengths, but striking was part of it too. And, and again, they were professional fighters. They were used to getting into that arena that very few people can get into, that, that scary place inside a ring where you have to be able to, you know, be calm in an uncalm environment where you have all so much pressure on you, deal with that element of fear that you got to give Paul credit that, you know, again, that he's been able to make that jump from, you know, being a promoter with the YouTube stuff, seeing an opportunity, and then bringing it over to the to this, whether you want to call it celebrity, boxing, whatever you want to call it, bringing it over to this. And then, again, yeah, he picked his opponents well. So did Floyd Mayweather in, in many parts of his career. I know I'm not comparing him to Floyd Mayweather, so don't get nuts out there, you know. Don't get your britches tight, some of you guys that are always looking to jump on something uh, no matter how ridiculous it might be but you, you're always looking but the point I'm making is he's still a work in progress he's taking it seriously he has fought real professional fighters and now he's picking another a legendary guy just like just like uh, Silva Anderson Silva was uh, but you know, at at the end of his career, because he's he's basically left the UFC now, Diaz, obviously, and he's going to do this. But he's still fight, and a guy who's not as old as Anderson Silva, he you know uh, Diaz is you know much younger than him, but he's still again he's still picking a fighter, he's still picking a guy who's got the mentality of a of a warrior. The, a guy who knows how to be calm in uncalm places. A guy who, you know, who can see things in a ring that most people could never see. Um, a guy who hurt Leon Edwards with a punch late in a fight against Leon Edwards, who's now the welterweight champion, upset the great Usman, who hurt him with a punch, but he didn't have enough time to finish or to follow up. I don't know if he would have been able to finish him, but he didn't follow up immediately, and then he lost that opportunity. Who knows? But he did catch him with a punch because he does throw unorthodox punches. He throws wide punches. Yep. He does leave himself open, Diaz, but he does also give himself a chance to land because they're coming from angles you don't expect. Even though there yep. is a defensive liability in the wideness that he sometimes throws them with. Um, yeah. So it's going to be, again, it's going to be, it's going to be boxing. It's it's not the rules with, you know, where you wouldn't even give a hesitation to say, well, I'm taking Diaz because he's allowed to get him on the ground where he would obviously be able to you know, be superior, dominate him in his environment. So it's boxing rules. Diaz, he can strike. He's a tough guy, but again, he he's not hard to hit. You know, he, he's, the old timers would say in some of his fights, he gets insulted if you miss him. Um, so, you know, but, but he's got a chin of granite. He's got a heart of five lions. We know all that. But again, he's now, as crazy as this sounds when I say it, even though he's the guy with all the history of fighting, he's the guy with the long career, he's the guy who's iconic, he's now in Jake Paul's theater, in his arena, where Jake Paul is the bigger guy, where he's got the edge with that, which he always gets the edge because he's the one putting these together. He's the one that's, you know, I'm not saying he's bringing all the money this time, um, or like Canelo does, but he's always he's he's brought the interest. He's the one who's initiated this. Diaz will bring a big fan to base, so it should be successful at the box office. Um, I have to go again with Jake Paul because he at minus two forty seven. You like Jake? Yeah, Paul? because 
at first I'm going to forget what the odds are. I'm just going to go with who Sorry, do I like. Sorry, uh, at minus, minus, three. yeah, three. minus 384. Yeah, three. I'm going to forget the lines for a minute. I, I'm just going to go with who I think is going to win first. That's how the best way yeah. for me to handicap it. And Jake Paul, yeah, Diaz could catch him with one of those unorthodox shots, uh, the way he has caught other people in the in the cage, and the way that he caught Edwards where he had him hurt at the end, even though he didn't finish him. But I'm going to say Jake Paul has advanced enough. He's developed enough. You know, he's still got a ways to go. He's still a work in progress where his defense can deal with the, those punches from Diaz. And where one thing that Paul does, he, he throws a pretty good jab. He throws his punches pretty straight, especially his right hand. And he throws the right hand straight with power. I think he's going to get an opportunity to control Diaz on the outside with his jab because Diaz will be right there in front of him. And he, it's you, you're not going to mistake Diaz for, you know, uh, an imitation of Floyd Mayweather. You know, he he ain't going to be slipping and dipping and doing shoulder rolls on you. He's going to be there. He's going to eat some punches and he's going to look to get to you. I think that Paul is developed enough to use his jab to control Diaz on the outside and then to either set up the right hand behind the jab or to maybe catch Diaz with a a timed right hand as Diaz maybe throws a wide left hook. At the end of the day, I'm going to go with Paul. I think he's going to be able to control, you know, control the He's going to have to be careful to control the pace of the fight because Diaz has a has a motor that never stops. He, he he's he's got an engine that that is going from morning, noon, night, and and beyond. So he's legendary with his endurance capabilities. Um, Paul's going to want to control the pace and slow it down. I think he can do that by using his legs to move to the sides, by controlling range, by using his jab, as I said, and picking spots for the right hand. Uh, I think he'd get a chance maybe to even land clean right hands where he could impact. I know Diaz has a granite shin, but where maybe he can, you know, affect Diaz with a good right hand, and then if he can put punches behind that, like the left hook behind that, he he might have a chance to, you know, to do a little damage to Diaz, uh, where possibly you could take a little venture on the under. But at the end of the day, that's what I was yeah, going to say too. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm going with Paul to win the fight. Maybe a little play on the under, although don't ever, ever bet too much on Diaz to be conquered. Especially where he wouldn't be standing at the, even if he loses, where he wouldn't be standing at the end because he's a proud, tough son of a gun. Uh, we talk about finding a way. He he understands that very well. Finding a way, whether to su- to win or to survive or whatever he has to do. Um, at the end of the day, he'll be trying to win. He'll be out there winging. A, Paul's technique. I think is better. I think uh, his straight punches will carry the day for him, uh, and and I I will I will go with Paul to win that fight. Very nice. So there you have it, Jake Paul in the under. Go to mybookie.ag and use the promo code Atlas if you're inclined to bet on the fight. 